Αγαπητοί τηλεθεατέ, καλησπέρα σα. Άλλη μια Παρασκευή, συνεπή στο ραντεβού μα, θα σα παρουσιάσουμε τι εκδηλώσει και τα δρόμενα που διαδραματίζονται στην Ομογένεια. Η ομάδα παραγωγή για μια ακόμα φορά σα υπόσχεται την έγκυρη εβδομαδιαία ενημέρωσή σα. Να σα υπενθυμίσουμε ότι μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε τι παραγωγέ του Hellenic TV από το Rockbox τη ΣΥΤΑ UK, που μπορείτε να το προμηθευτείτε από τα γραφεία τη στο Southgate. Με αυτόν τον τρόπο μπορείτε να βλέπετε το Hellenic TV One και ολόκληρη την πλατφόρμα του, που περιλαμβάνει 14 ελληνικά κανάλια που Ελλάδα και Κύπρο, νέε κινηματογραφικέ παραγωγέ, καθώ και να υποφυληθείτε από όλε τι υπόλοιπε υπηρεσίε που προσφέρει η ΣΥΤΑ UK. Περισσότερε πληροφορίε σχετικά με τα προγράμματα του Hellenic TV μπορείτε να βρείτε στην ιστοσελίδα μα www.hellenictv.net, ενώ για τον τρόπο με τον οποίο μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε ολόκληρη την πλατφόρμα του Hellenic TV στι τηλεοράσει σα, στην ιστοσελίδα www.citauk.com. Για την προβολή των εκδηλώσεών σα και τη επιχείρησή σα, επικοινωνήστε μαζί μα στο τηλέφωνο 020-8292-7037 ή στην ηλεκτρονική μα διεύθυνση info.hellenictv.net. Στην απόψηνή μα εκπομπή θα σα παρουσιάσουμε την ετήσια χωρεσπερίδα που διοργάνωσε το Δίκο Αγγλία, την εκδήλωση τη Σχολή Βυζαντινής Μουσική με θέμα Οι Τρει Ιεράρχε και τα Ελληνικά Γράμματα, και τέλο την έκθεση που διοργανώθηκε στο Penry Suite σχετικά με την προετοιμασία των γάμων. Το πρώτο μα θέμα για απόψε παρουσιάζει την ετήσια χωρεσπερίδα που διοργάνωσε το Δίκο Αγγλία. Το περασμένο Σάββατο, 7 Φεβρουαρίου, το Δίκο Αγγλίας διοργάνωσε με μεγάλη επιτυχία την ετήσια χωρεσπερίδα του. Την εκδήλωση τίμησαν με την παρουσία τους ο πρόεδρος του Δίκο, κ. Νικόλας Παπαδόπουλος, ο θεοφιλέστατος επίσκοπος Τροπέου Αθανάσιος, ο ύπατος αρμοστής της Κυπριακής Δημοκρατίας, κ. Ευρυπίδης Ευρυβιάδης, η Βρετανίδα Υπουργό Συγκοινωνιών, κ. Τερέζα Βίλιερς, ο πρόεδρο τη ΠΟΜΑ, κ. Ανδρέα Παπαευρυπίδη, ο πρόεδρο τη Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία, κ. Πίτρα Δρουσιώτη, ο Γενικό Πρόξενο τη Κύπρου, Γιώργο Γεωργίου, οι εκπρόσωποι των παρικιακών παρατημάτων, των κομμάτων και πολλοί υποστηρικτέ και φίλοι του Δίκου. Για την διασκέδαση τη βραδιά φρόντισε η γνωστή Κύπρια τραγουδίστρια Κωνσταντίνα. Η βραδιά ξεκίνησε με χαιρετισμό και ομιλία από τον πρόεδρο του Δίκου Αγγλία, κ. Μιχάλη Έλληνα. Καλώ όρισε όλου του παρευρισκόμενου και ιδιαίτερα τον πρόεδρο του Δίκο, κ. Νικόλα Παπαδόπουλο, ο οποίο κάνει για πρώτη φορά την εμφάνισή του στην Ομογένεια σαν επίσημο εκλεγμένο πρόεδρο του Δίκο. Α περάσουμε να παρακολουθήσουμε πρώτα την ομιλία του κ. Μιχάλη Έλληνα και στη συνέχεια θα δούμε περισσότερα. Θεοφιλέστατε, φίλε πρόεδρε του Δημοκρατικού Κόμματο και αγαπητή Γιώτα, Right Honorable Secretary for Northern Ireland and our Um, local MP, dear friend Teresa Villiers, Kire Ibade Armosta Evripidi Evribiadi, dear members of parliament, David Barrows from Enfield and Southgate constituency, and Nick Tebois of Enfield North constituency. Dear friend, leader of the Merton Council, Labour Councillor Stephen Alambridi, Phile Proedre di Spomak, che tu democraticus in Agermu, in Omenu Vasiliu Andrea Papa Evripidi, Phile Proedre di Ethnicis, Kipriakis Omospondias, Peter Drusciotti, Agapide Proedre di Elino Orthodoxon, Kinotito Vretanias, Maria Minaidi, Φίλε Επαρχιακέ Γραμματέα του Ακέλε Βρετανία Πάμπο Χαραλάμπου, φίλε Πρόεδρε τη ΕΔΕΚ Μιχάλη Κασί, κύριε Γενικέ Πρόξερε τη Κύπρου Γιώργο Γεωργίου, αγαπητοί εκπρόσωποι τη Νεολαία τη Εθνική Ομοσπονδία Χρήστο Καραολί και Ξένια Κουμή και τη Αναγέννηση Γιώργο Ελευθερίου, κυρίε και κύριοι, με ιδιαίτερη χαρά καλωσορίζω όλου την απόψηνή ετήσια χωροσπερίδα του Δίκου Αγγλία και σας ευχαριστώ για την τιμητική σας παρουσία. Είμαι βέβαιος ότι θα περάσουμε όλοι μαζί μια ευχάριστη βραδιά. Αυτό άλλωστε μαρτυρεί και η προϊστορία των εκδηλώσεων μας. I am sure that our guests will also have a beautiful and entertaining evening. I'm not hopeful about their ability to dance the Greek way But I am sure that at least they will have an opportunity to watch others dancing and enjoy the Greek music. Αγαπητοί φίλοι, είναι για μένα 
ξεχωριστή χαρά να καλωσορίζω απόψε ανάμεσά μας τον Πρόεδρο του Δημοκρατικού Κόμματος, Νικόλα Παπαδόπουλο. Είναι η πρώτη δημόσια συμμετοχή του σε εκδήλωση του Δίκου Αγγλίας από τότε που ανέλαβε τα ενία του κόμματός μας, γι' αυτό και η παρουσία του αποκτά ιδιαίτερη σημασία. Πρέπει να πω, κατά κρύβεια να ομολογήσω, ότι η παρουσία του Νικόλα μου προκαλεί ανάμειχτα αισθήματα συγκίνησης, αλλά και συναισθηματική φόρτιση. Όχι μόνο γιατί είχα το προνόμιο να υποδέχομαι από αυτή τη θέση και να προσφορώ τον αείμνηστο πατέρα του, αλλά και γιατί με τον Νικόλα με συνδέουν παλιοί κοινοί αγώνες στο Λονδίνο. Τον θυμάμαι σαν να ήταν χθες, μικρότερος εκείνος βέβαια, φοιτητής της νομικής στο UCL κατά τη δεκαετία του 1990, να αγωνίζεται μέσα από τις τάξεις της φοιτητική μας παράταξης αναγέννηση και να επιδεικνύει από τότε ηγετικές ικανότητες και έμφυτες αρετές δημοσίου ανδρός. Η συνεργασία μας ήταν άψογη και αποδοτική. Πολύ λίγοι ίσως γνωρίζουν, εκτός από τον Παύλο τον Παυλίδη, ότι ο Νικόλας υπήρξε τότε ο πρώτος πρόεδρος της νεοσυσταθής ΑΣΕΦΕΚ Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου μέσα από τη δράση της οποίας επέδειξε ήθος και ήταν ευρύτερα αποδεχτός από συναγωνιστές και αντιπάλους του. Με συγχωρείτε για αυτόν τον προσωπικό τόνο που δίνω για την παρουσία του Νικόλα αλλά για να το εξηγήσω αρχαιοελληνικά πάσιν ημίν την αλήθεια ερώ. Σε καλωσορίζουμε λοιπόν Νικόλα στην εκδήλωσή μας και σου ευχόμαστε κάθε επιτυχίες στους αγώνες σου, υγείαν και ευτυχίαν προπάντων στο διάβα της ζωής σου. Καλωσορίζουμε τον Ευρωβουλευτή μας, ο οποίος άρχισε βέβαια, αλλά δεν πειράζει, το συγχωρούμε, τον Κώσταντο Μαυρίδη. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us this evening three British politicians prominent personalities in this country who have always shown a keen interest in Cyprus' battle for freedom and justice. It is not necessary for me to go into details and to introduce you to Teresa Villiers. She is well known in our community. She is a valuable friend of Cyprus for more than 15 years has stood alongside us in our efforts to bring an end to the Turkish occupation and for the prevalence of freedom of Cyprus. Perhaps we have several times disagreed with the policies of the Foreign Office, but we recognize that Teresa is always there to try and correct mistaken decisions and to raise her voice for Cyprus and her opinion is taken into consideration. The fact that when the President Anastasiadis on an official visit to London last year met with David Cameron and was immediately asked by the Prime Minister, have you seen Teresa, is indicative of this. This says a great deal to us that a member of the British government is recognized at the highest level of government that she is, she is striving for a just solution to the Cyprus problem. Thank you, Teresa, from the bottom of our hearts and our gratitude will soon be expressed by action, not just words. I would also like to welcome and thank two more friends from the Conservative Party who are here with us this evening. David Barrows and Nick Depois. The latter will be standing against a very pro-Turkish candidate at the forthcoming general election. I cannot bring myself to mention her by name. You all know her. We thank you both, David and Nick, for your efforts and we are sure that you will continue to work in Parliament for an end to the occupation and after the election. 
Dear friends, allow me to take this opportunity to respond to those here in Britain who claim that the Turkish Cypriots have become isolated. This is disingenuous and untrue. There is absolutely no isolation of the ordinary Turkish Cypriots. They all carry the passports of the Republic of Cyprus and they are free to travel abroad wherever they wish and to carry out trade through the legal ports and airports on the island. The only isolation that exists is that of the illegal regime established by the occupation and the settlers from Turkey and this has been imposed by the United Nations following resolutions 541 and 550 and by the European Union itself. Consequently, those who subtly talk of an end to the so-called isolation of the Turkish Cypriots are in fact asking for an indirect recognition of the pseudo-state. My friends, Turkey continues to this day to threaten not only the Republic of Cyprus with another invasion into the Republic's exclusive economic zone, but also threatens Europe itself. Provocatively, Turkey has refused to cooperate in the war against the largest threat to humanity being faced today, the barbaric organization ISIS. On the contrary, by her stance, Turkey is aiding the jihadists and is fooling the rest of Europe, of Europe by claiming that she has welcomed Syrian refugees who in any case are being cared for by international humanitarian organizations. Turkey is region's main agitator with Ottoman expansionist thoughts. No economic interest should take priority over the political stability in the Middle East and the war on terror. Unfortunately, Turkey has adopted very un-European behavior which serves to make Turkey itself a part of the, of the problem. Θέλουμε να βοηθήσουμε την Κύπρο εδώ στη Βρετανία. Το πρώτο πράγμα και το μεγαλύτερο που μπορούμε να κάνουμε είναι να πάμε να ψηφίσουμε τον προσεχή Μάιο. Είναι ύψης της σημασίας η καταγραφή μας ότι προσερχόμαστε στις κάλπες. Και ό,τι θέλουμε ας ψηφίσουμε. Μας μετρούν. Βλέπουν αν έχουμε εκλογική δύναμη ή όχι. Και αυτό που λαμβάνουν υπόψη εδώ τα κόμματα είναι η συμμετοχή στις εκλογές. Από εκεί και πέρα θέση του δίκου Αγγλίας είναι να ψηφιστούν οι δοκιμασμένοι φίλοι της Κύπρου ανεξαρτήτως σε ποιο κόμμα ανήκουν. Αυτό πιστεύουμε ότι είναι εθνικών καθήκων του κάθε ενός μας να προσέλθει στις κάλπες. Στη συνέχεια στο βήμα ανέβηκε η Υπουργό Συγκοινωνιών, κυρία Τερέζα Βίλιερς, η οποία υποστηρίζει θερμά τα δίκαια αιτήματα της Κύπρου και ευχαρίστησε τον κύριο Μιχάλη Έλληνα για την υποστήριξη προς εκείνη και του έδωσε θερμά συγχαρητήρια για την προσπάθεια που κάνει για τα ελληνικά σχολεία της παρακίας. Ας παρακολουθήσουμε τη σύντομη μιλία της κυρίας Τερέζα Βίλιερς. As ever, it's a great honour to be here and an even greater honour to be asked to address the gathering this evening. Um, I have the greatest, greatest respect for Michael Ellenas and all the wonderful work he does for your party and of course for education through his work at Manor Hill Greek School. And I value his huge support that he's given to me as well. So thank you, Michael, for this evening and for all the support that you give to me and my Conservative colleagues as well. And um, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be speaking on behalf of my Conservative colleagues, Nick Dubois and David Burrows. Um, as you know, as you've heard, we are all um, up for re-election in around 80 days' time, so very much hope that uh, the Cypriot community will be out in force to support us. Um, because this is a crucial election for this country, there is a really, really big choice before you. It is vital that you all come out and exercise your vote and have your say on what is probably the most important election for a generation. And be in no doubt there is a very big difference between a Conservative government and a Labour government. Let no one tell you, oh, it doesn't matter who I vote for, oh, you might as well stay at home or vote for one of these fringe parties. It does matter. There is a big difference between David Cameron as Prime Minister and Ed Miliband as Prime Minister. But um, tonight I want to say a few words 
about the struggle for justice and freedom in Cyprus. As you know, and as you've heard again this evening, that's something in which I've been involved for around 17 years now. And it's a tragedy that Cyprus remains divided after 40 years. It's a huge injustice and it is a tragedy that that has been allowed to continue for far, far too long. And you have very many friends in Parliament who are determined to support Cypriots in their long and painstaking efforts to reach that just and balanced negotiated solution. I know that the, the President of Cyprus faces hugely difficult choices on the economy, difficult decisions to make in the face of the incursion into the EEZ, which has sadly um, put, uh, put a stop to the moment, for the moment to the negotiations. It's an entirely understandable decision by the President, and it is, of course, deeply regrettable that that incursion has been made. And I think it, it is vital that we see the EZ respected in full, which would, of course, enable those crucially important negotiations to start once again. But rest assured that um, I and Nick and David and Matthew Offord and Mike Freer, we will continue to campaign strongly and enthusiastically to support freedom for Cyprus. We believe that that is absolutely vital. We will always be there to support you. We will continue to fight on your behalf for at last a free, united Cyprus, which is what we all want to see. Thank you very much. Επόμενο ομιλητή ήταν ο πρόεδρο του Δίκο, κ. Νικόλα Παπαδόπουλο, ο οποίο έκανε μια ενημερωτική ομιλία αγγίζοντα όλα τα φλέγοντα θέματα τη επικαιρότητα, όπω το Κυπριακό, την οικονομική κρίση και του υδρογονάνθρακε. Εμεί θα περάσουμε να παρακολουθήσουμε ολόκληρη την ομιλία του πρόεδρου του Δίκο, κ. Νικόλα Παπαδόπουλου, ο οποίο μίλησε στα ελληνικά και στα αγγλικά. Φίλε εκπρόσωποι των Ομοσπονδιών, των Οργανώσεων τη Παρικία, τη Ομογένεια, Distinguished guests, members of parliament, dear Teresa, Philip Michali, Prodre to Digo Anglias, Neophilo Jogo Nadomologiso, and as a Bodusologus, Poprocopsa Politigan, Epidihas, the Arkindis Carreras, Mudin Cathodidis, in the Symbolis to Michali to Elena, Tonavio Theron F. Haristis of Gibisim Abopse. Please allow me to begin my speech in, in Greek. I will return in English, but I believe that before the night is through, you will either learn Greek or Greek dancing. I'll leave it to you to decide which is easiest. Φίλες και φίλοι, ξεκίνησα την ανάμειξη μου στα κοινά των προσωπικών μου πολιτικών αγώνα εδώ στην παρικία, ανάμεσά σα. Και είναι με ιδιαίτερη χαρά και συγκίνηση που μου επιστρέφω απόψε ανάμεσά σα σε αυτόν τον ετήσιο χώρο του Δίκου Αγγλίας που δεν είναι μια απλή χώρα σπερίδα, είναι ένας θεσμός που μας βοηθά γιατί μας δίνει την ευκαιρία να συναντηθούμε, να αλληλοενημερωθούμε, να ενδυναμώσουμε τους δεσμούς αναμεταξύ μας. Θέλω να σα μεταφέρω το σεβασμό την αγάπη αλλά και την τιμή της ηγεσία και των μελών του Δημοκρατικού Κόμματος. Την εκτίμησή τους για, τον, για την συνεχή και την αδιάλεπτη προσφορά σας στην ιδιαίτερη σας πατρίδα, την Κύπρο. Μια προσφορά πολυσχηδής, πολυεπίπεδη αλλά κυρίως ανιδιοτελής. Και δεν σας κρύβω ότι καταπιάνομαι από συναισθήματα Ταπεινότητα αλλά και δέου, όταν βλέπω εσά χρόνο με το χρόνο, μέσα στη ξενιτιά, να δίνετε δύσκολου αγώνε και να δίνετε σε εμά στην Κύπρο μαθήματα πατριωτισμού, αγάπη και προσφορά προ την Κύπρο. Ειλικρινά είσαι στην άξη θαυμασμού και θέλω να σα ευχαριστήσω για όλα όσα προσφέρετε στην Κύπρο και στον λαό τη. The rest of my speech I will address our distinguished guests and you in English, and I apologize for my accent. But I believe that it is important that we say some things in English. Because I wish tonight to express some thoughts regarding the serious developments in Cyprus, both on the economic front, but as well as the attempts to solve the long-lasting Cyprus problem. 
But I wish to turn first to Europe, because I honestly and with great sadness believe that Europe is failing. It's failing to meet its promise to the people of Europe. Actually, one could state quite seriously that the European Union is falling apart. Am I being too dramatic, perhaps, but developments are quite dramatic in the European Union. The United Kingdom is heading towards a referendum and no one can predict its outcome. Greece is now threatened with a Brexit. We see growing resentment in Spain, in Portugal, mainly in the countries of the South, regards, regards to policies that the people believe are not effective. But even worse, we see the rise of extremist political groups throughout the European Union. And all this wouldn't matter if the policies pursued today by the European Union were working. But they are not. Let's compare the United States to the European Union. America dealt with its own economic crisis decisively, quickly, with concerted action. And today, the American economy is booming. Europe, on the other hand, muddled through with inaction, with disputed and wrong decisions. And what are the results today? The North is in stagnation, and the South is in deep recession. And it is becoming increasingly evident that we are now talking about two Europes north and south, and they are heading towards different directions. Now, I wish the new government of Greece the best of luck, and we will support them in their endeavors. I sincerely do hope that they succeed in helping the Greek people. Our politics are very different than those of Syriza. The problems that Cyprus is facing are different than the problems that Greece is facing. But we do agree with something with the present Greek government, in that the European Union must change, and it must begin to start listening. And, of course, the programs that affect our own two countries, they also have to change. And we wish to renegotiate them. I am not a Eurosceptic. I am a Europhile but I am disappointed with the European Union because it is increasingly evident that different standards exist for different countries. Different decisions were taken for big, important countries and different decisions were taken for weaker, smaller countries. And the example of Cyprus is just one such example. Greece's case was that it had a very high public debt it was haircutted. We paid for it. And we did it willingly because we wanted to help Greece. Our problem was the banks. We had very high private debt. So what did our European partners decide? To take away our money. They stole our money. Our money got haircutted. Our deposits got haircutted. A solution was imposed in Cyprus that was imposed nowhere else in Europe. In other countries, they saved their banks so that people wouldn't lose their money. In Cyprus, they took our money to save the banks, and not even the Cypriot banks. We sent our money to the Greek banks. Greek, the Cypriot pensioners got haircutted. Pension funds got haircutted. Businesses went bust, but certain Greek bankers made billions. That was, unfortunately, the Cypriot solution. And the result, the result of this wrong decision is unfortunately that today, in Cyprus, we have a lower per capita income than Greece. One third of our population is now living below the poverty line. 240,000 fellow Cypriots live in property. 
unemployment is skyrocketing. We have the highest percentage of non-performing loans in the history of banking. Something went very wrong with the Cypriot program. And this is what we are trying to explain to our European partners. We are not Greece, but we agree with the Greek government. The European Union must change, they must start listening, and the same rules should apply to all countries. We wish for our program to be renegotiated, for certain aspects of it to be improved. We want banks to start restructuring loans, to lower their interest rates. We want tax incentives to attract foreign businesses to Cyprus. We want to stop mass foreclosures to protect the family home. And above all, we want our money back. The one that they stole, we want it back. We are asking for it to return where it came from, if they want to be just. And I want to congratulate and commend the new Greek Prime Minister because he has announced to us, to us that he's going to start an inquiry regarding the PSI, the Greek PSI, and the Cypriot haircut. And perhaps then we'll get some answers of who benefited. And perhaps then we will get the help that our people deserve. And I'll turn to the efforts for solving the long-lasting Cyprus problem. Ladies and gentlemen, ever since 1974, the Greek Cypriots have been trying to reunite our country, to reunite our people, to reunite the island. But unfortunately, we have not been successful. And the main reason for the failure of our endeavor is very simple. Because we have very different goals with Turkey as regards the Cyprus solution and the future of our island. We hope, as Greek Cypriots, that in the future we may live together with our Turkish Cypriot counterparts in a reunified country, under a single sovereign state, in a bi-zonal, bi-communal federation. Turkey, on the other hand, has a very different vision. From 1974 to this very day, they have been pursuing a policy of ethnic cleansing. They want a two-state solution in Cyprus, where the two people, as they call them, will be separate. They do not care and they do not concern themselves with what the Turkish Cypriots want. They only care with what Turkey wants, and it's not the same thing. And the result of the policies pursued by Turkey is that the majority of Turkish Cypriots have left Cyprus. They have been replaced by settlers that have been brought to the island intentionally to change its demographics. Of course, in any event, what Turkey wants is to retain control over the whole island of Cyprus, either through vetoes or through guarantees and the right of intervention. They wish to be absolute masters in the north and equal partners in the south. This has always been their policies. Now, it is very indicative that when Mr. Erdogan assumed power several years ago, he declared publicly that his foreign policy would be to attain a position where he would have zero problem with his neighbors. Today, there isn't a single neighbor of Turkey that doesn't have a problem. Greece, Cyprus, Egypt, Syria, even Saudi Arabia, they all know what it means not to agree to the Turkish plans. Now, we have to acknowledge that there have been dramatic geopolitical developments in our region. The Middle East is in turmoil. And Turkey sees the potential to arise out of this turmoil as the dominant force of the Muslim world. And they, they have, uh, in fact, behaved consistently and increasingly as a destabilizing force in the region. Now, despite Turkey's plans, we have been striving to reach a solution to safeguard all Cypriots' future on the island, Greek Cypriots, and Turkish Cypriots. The Democratic Party believes that our membership in the European Union and the prospects given to us from the hydrocarbon reserves that we have found to the south of the island 
give us two very powerful incentives that will help us solve the problem. After all, Turkey wants to join the EU. The Turkish Cypriots want to benefit from the natural gas. A solution to the Cyprus problem will act as a benefit to both. But of course, Turkey has other plans. They want the European Union and the natural gas off the table. They refuse to recognize us, despite European Union directives. And now, they have started to illegally explore for natural gas within the exclusive economic zone of Cyprus in contravention of international law and the law of the sea. They wish for us, they wish to force us to freeze our exploration because they do not want to give the Turkish Cypriots the incentive to solve the problem through concessions. This is the reason why Turkey has extended this occupation to the south of the island. President Anastasiadis is correct to discontinue the negotiations. We cannot negotiate under duress and the gunboat diplomacy uh, uh, that Turkey is pursuing at the moment cannot succeed. Because if it succeeds, it will send the message to Turkey that it can get what it wants through the threat of force. You cannot negotiate under such conditions. It is our belief that the Republic of Cyprus must react strongly against this Turkish aggression because Turkey must pay political cost for infringing upon the sovereign rights of a member state of the European Union. And we believe that unless we curb this Turkish aggression now, we will face more aggression in the future. Appeasement will not work. It has never worked in the past with Turkey. It will not work now. It will not work in the future. But we also believe that dealing with Turkish aggression is in the best interests of Europe. Turkey wants to completely dominate the Eastern Mediterranean. They want to turn it through the control of Cyprus into a Turkish lake. Their words, not mine. They want to completely control the hydrocarbon reserves in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Azerbaijan oil reserves that will pass through Turkey to Europe. And if they succeed in this, in the future, they will control two-thirds of energy imports to Europe. Now that is something to think about. Ladies and gentlemen, I repeat that we have strived ever since 1974, 40 plus long years, to find a solution to a long-lasting problem, to correct a long-lasting injustice to unite a small country that cannot be and should not be divided. We shall continue this struggle. No matter the hurdles put before us, we shall pursue the dream of a free and united Cyprus. Because for us, the most valuable resource that we are looking for is peace. And let us hope that 2015 will be the year of peace and prosperity for Cyprus. Thank you very much. Μετά τις ομιλίες ακολούθησε διασκέδαση. Η γνωστή και η πρία τραγουδίστρια Κωνσταντίνα με την ορχήστρα της φρόντισαν για τη διασκέδαση της βραδιάς. Στο μπουζούκι ήταν ο Γιάννης Δελιγιάννης και στο βιολί ο Μιχάλης Κουλουμής. Μαζί τους η γνωστή μουσική Γιώργος Γρηγορίου και Νίκος Σαβίδης. Η Κωνσταντίνα τραγούδισε παραδοσιακά κυπριακά τραγούδια αλλά και δικά τη επιτυχίε με τι οποίε ξεσήκωσε του παρευρισκόμενου σε ξέφρενου χορού. Α δούμε ένα απόσπασμα από την όμορφη βραδιά. Grip 
Ολόκληρη τη χωροσπερίδα του Δίκο Αγγλίας θα την παρακολουθήσετε προσεχώς στην εκπομπή με το φακό του Hellenic TV.